morning. I'm here joined with our Division of Emergency Management Director Kevin Guthrie, our Adjutant General of the Florida National Guard, Major General John Haas, Secretary Florida Department of Transportation Jared Perdue, our Region 4 Acting Administrator for FEMA Robert Saman, and Rear Admiral Doug Schofield with the U.S. Coast Guard. As of 8 a.m. this morning, uh, Hurricane Idalia is located approximately 130 miles south of the Dry Tortugas with winds in excess of 80 miles per hour. It is officially a hurricane. The storm is forecast to make landfall along Florida's Big Bend tomorrow morning as a major hurricane. The National Hurricane Center has issued a hurricane warning for the Gulf Coast from Sarasota County up through Franklin County in the Panhandle and storm surge watches are also in effect in those areas. Uh, the National Hurricane Center advisory includes that if this storm hits at high tide, storm surge could reach 8 to 12 feet in some areas. And so that would be a life-threatening storm surge. I know all those areas are, are under uh, evacuation notices in the low-lying and coastal areas. Uh, you run from the water and you hide from the wind. Uh, if you're there in that storm surge, uh, you're putting your life uh, in jeopardy when it gets to be uh, that, uh, that high. So if you are giving those orders, uh, please heed those orders. You do not have to leave the state. You don't have to drive hundreds of miles. You have to get to higher ground and a safe structure. Uh, you can ride the storm out there, then go back to your home uh, once the storm passes. There are evacuation orders for coastal and low-lying areas in 22 uh, different counties along the Gulf Coast, uh, as well as throughout North Florida. To make these evacuations easier on families, uh, we have directed FDOT to waive tolls in Citrus, Hernando, Hillsborough Lake, Pasco, Pinellas, and Sumter counties, and that started at 0400 this morning. Uh, for those evacuating, Visit Florida has activated the emergency accommodation module with Expedia. So if you want to find a hotel, you can go to Expedia.com slash Florida. We are coordinating, continue to coordinate with the power companies across the state. Uh, we had, as of this morning, over 25,000 linemen stationed, more on the way. Uh, so you will have um, most likely between 30 and 40,000 linemen when the storm hits will be in the state of Florida and then they will immediately move to uh, commence power restoration efforts. Uh, we've also been working with counties to make sure that they know uh, that we have resources ready to deploy and we want to be helpful to support uh, their efforts. So we have received more than 450 active missions that we are coordinating. Every resource request we receive has either been filled or will be filled uh, by the end of this morning. We do have 420,000 gallons of fuel staged and ready to deploy, and additional assets are expected over the next few days, and the gas stations that will be prioritized will be the ones along the, the heavy evacuation routes. Uh, we have eight urban search and rescue teams activated and over 580 search and rescue personnel uh, ready right now. We have delivered 431 pallets of water, uh, 303 pallets of MREs, and over 1,200 tarps to communities that may be impacted. We've got many more gallons of water and a lot of MREs that are ready to be deployed as needed. Uh, there are over 20 shelters open, um, and additional 20 special needs shelters are mobilizing or on standby throughout uh, the state of Florida. We have 5,500 National Guardsmen that have been activated. Uh, we have deployed 247 Starlinks with another 529 stage in Central Florida, and they will be deployed to impacted areas as the needs uh, arise. 42 school districts have announced school closures over the next two days, along with 16 state colleges and seven Florida universities. Our Florida Department of Transportation has more than 600 personnel, including over 220 cut and toss crew members with more than 400 pieces of heavy equipment and trucks strategically placed across the state to prepare for cut and toss operations post storm. And if you look at that track of where it's going now, uh, you are going to see a lot of debris. Uh, there's a lot of trees along that track and it is going to knock down trees, it's going to knock down power lines, and there's going to be a, a need to be able to clear uh, a lot of the, the, the right-of-ways. Uh, Florida Department of Transportation has about 1,100 generators en route to impacted areas, and they're going to use that to get the traffic signals up and running as soon as possible when the storm passes. 
Uh, as wind becomes stronger later today and into the night, FDOT will be coordinating with the FHP and local law enforcement to close bridges once the speeds reach in excess of 40 miles an hour. Uh, road rangers will be concentrated along evacuation routes to help motorists. Uh, we have also called up 33 ambulance strike teams with over 200 ambulances that are ready to surge into any impacted area. We've also request, requested uh, an additional six strike teams through our emergency management assistance compact uh, with other states. So this storm is, is, is going to hit uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, you will start certainly seeing effects of this in different parts of the state. Uh, later on today. Uh, you still have time this morning to be able to make your final preparations. Uh, if you are in one of those areas that's in line for some of the major storm surge and you're told to evacuate, you know, you have time to do that. Uh, but you got you to do that now. You don't have to go hundreds of miles. You can go to a shelter in a different part of your county, go to a friend's house in an area that is not going to be susceptible to the storm surge, hotel, all these things uh, are, are, are good to do, uh, and you should do that in heed. Uh, this is going to be a major hurricane, uh, likely a Category 3, and it's where it's uh, scheduled to hit along this big bend, and we've not really had a hurricane strike this area uh, for a long, long time. I think you got to go back to the 1800s before you would see a path uh, like this. And so, so those coastal areas there, you know, have not necessarily been through this before, and I think that, that, uh, that being safe is, is the appropriate thing and, and erring on the side of caution is the appropriate thing. Uh, we will, of course, be mindful of any changes in the path of this storm. I think everybody on that Gulf Coast from Tampa Bay up until Northwest Florida uh, must remain vigilant. They have nudged the track a little bit further west over the last uh, 24 hours. I mean, we were looking at potentially um, uh, a Levy County, I think, yesterday at today. Now we're looking more uh, at a Taylor County. Uh, there's some models that say it may go even, even further west. So, so places like Tallahassee, where we are today, certainly uh, you could end up having it uh, hit Tallahassee directly in some of the surrounding areas. So, so everyone just remain vigilant, continue to watch uh, and listen to the local orders uh, that you receive from your local emergency management personnel. I want to thank everybody. Uh, you know, we've been in contact with you know, people from, from most of these, these counties over the last few days. Everybody's working hard. Everybody understands that, um, that this is a significant event. And uh, you know, they're remaining uh, calm, uh, cool, and collected, but they're, they're executing. And that's what we need to, to continue to do. I want to thank everybody here at the state of Florida for, for working hard. They've been working uh, now around the clock and, and getting, the, get, getting the resources where they need to be as those requests come in. And of course, once the storm passes, we're going to immediately go uh, to, to commence any type of rescue operations. And, and of course, the power restoration will be a, a big, 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 a big priority. Go to floridadisaster.org slash get a plan. Uh, if you have any questions, again, you still have uh, some time uh, this morning and into the early afternoon. But as we get throughout this day, uh, you are going to start to see uh, uh, rain and wind pick up, particularly the further south you are in the state of Florida. And by the time, um, you know, we get to the end of tonight, uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to see some nasty weather. So, so just be be. Be, be warned about that and, and do what you need to do right now uh, to be able to keep yourself and your family safe. Okay, we're going to hear from Kevin Guthrie, uh, Division of Emergency Management. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Governor, again for your continued support and leadership. As of this morning, Adelia was upgraded to a Category 1 hurricane and is expected to continue to strengthen as it makes its way through the Gulf of Mexico. The storm is going to be here very soon. By this time tomorrow morning, we will pretty much lock down the EOC and we will be uh, working through those issues. The state is working overtime to fulfill requests made by counties in the path of the storm. Uh, to date, we have filled 400, or we are actively working 461 missions. We have closed 72 missions for a total of 552 missions. Counties, please continue to send in your resource request so that we can take advantage of the time we have left. We're gonna have about another 18 hours, 16, 18 hours or so that we can move commodities. After that, we will not be able to do that any longer. We're doing everything we can, ensure, we can to ensure that communities have the necessary resources they need. But you as a household owner, 
You need to take action now. You need to get you and your family businesses, you need to get your employees ready now. The time is now. I implore you to finalize your disaster preparedness actions right now. I want to stress again, even if your community is not in the forecast cone, it does not mean you're in the clear. I'm going to use a graphic to my left. If you're in red on this graphic, you're underneath a hurricane or tropical storm warning or you're underneath a surge warning. If you're in pink, you're under a watch. That is well outside that cone. So again, people are going to experience issues with this from trees down, power being shut down, heavy rains are on the east side of this storm. It's going to be a very fast moving storm, but please, if you're in the red, don't focus on that cone. Focus on if you're in the red, you need to take some type of protective action and you need to do that now. If you decide to shelter in place, identify a safe place in your home away from windows where you can shelter safely. The same thing applies to the very first thing that we're going to experience most likely in Florida, which is a tornado. If you find yourself in a tornado watch or warning, please get yourself to an interior room free of windows, put a mattress over your head. Even if you have some type of bicycle helmet or something like that, you need to protect your head from tornadic activity. If you're evacuating, do not leave your pets behind. Make sure you have leashes, carriers, plenty of food and water for them. Evacuations can be stressful on the whole family, so please pack comfort items for your kids, like their favorite toys, games, or snacks. Make sure that if you, before you leave your home or if you're sheltering in place, if you can pick it up, put it up. If you cannot pick it up, tie it down. Minimize the amount of items that can uh, be picked up and uh, overturned in, in your neighborhood. Whatever you decide is the best for yourself and your family, again, the action is now. You must do it now. If you're unsure about the next steps of what to do, please contact your local emergency management office. We have also launched the State Assistance Information Line, or in true emergency management vein, we have plenty of acronyms, So, or the SAIL line. You can contact them at 1-800-342-3557. Again, that's 1-800-342-3557. 3557, that's the state assistance information line, and they can uh, take any requests that you have. We have operators standing by now, and that is a 24 7 hotline. They will help you out with how to prepare before, during, and after a hurricane, road closures, alternate routes, available open shelters in host and impacted counties, shelters designed for medically dependent individuals, and re entry information. All of that is available at that number. You can also, of course, get up-to-date information by visiting our emergency information site at floridadisaster.org slash updates and following us on social media at FLSCRT or at FLCERT. We also uh, just launched yesterday a new guide for newcomers to Florida and visitors to Florida. That is available at floridadisaster.org slash guide, floridadisaster.org slash guide. I will talk very quickly about uh, an operational component that we're going to experience in this particular disaster, and that is this storm is going to move through during the day tomorrow, and then we're going to be at a point where we might be able to start operating towards sunset, but we're going to be operating in areas that with our, are without power. These are going to be very, very delicate tactical operations. They may be done from the river. They may be done from creeks. They may be done from helicopters. So again, it's not something we like to do, which is operate in a dark environment with power lines entangled in trees. But again, we understand that people are probably going to call 911 and need some assistance. So we, along with counties across the, uh, the uh, area, are working with FWC, the Florida National Guard, the U.S. Coast Guard on how we're going to best be able to help those persons in need. So uh, we're working through all that today, and then we'll get uh, in our later press briefing today as well as in tomorrow. We'll start talking more about recovery efforts. Again, Governor, thank you so much for your time, your leadership, and support. Jared. All right, good morning. Thank you, Governor DeSantis, for your leadership as we continue preparing for this event. Thank you, Director Guthrie, for your continued efforts as we as we prepare. The Florida Department of Transportation has many activities simultaneously in motion right now to ensure the safety of the traveling public and to have open mobility of all major roadways in advance of the storm's impact. I've been on the road this week personally seeing all the equipment, personnel, resources being staged ready to respond to this event. FDOT has 671 crew members including almost 100 bridge inspectors, 
stage near impact zones to quickly advance on the ground to clear, clear roadways and bridges and provide first responders, supply deliveries, and utility providers the ability to reach communities in need. We have 224 cut and toss crew members. They've been outfitted with plenty of equipment to begin recovery efforts. This includes 140 dump trucks, 200 pieces of heavy equipment, and nearly 60 pump trucks. There are almost nearly, as the governor mentioned, 1,100 generators staged and ready to be deployed for traffic signals that may lose power. Um, FDOT is also allowing utility companies to stage at our way stations along our interstate system. Our contractors on active construction projects in the vicinity of the impact area have begun um, closing their operations of construction, opening the travel lanes, and especially in the Tampa Bay region with the Howard Franklin Bridge project, we've, we've lowered those crane booms and secured those barges for impact. Um, our project crews um, continue to work diligently to make sure that any evacuations that occur can be facilitated efficiently. We continue to coordinate with the Florida Highway Patrol, local law enforcement, and the U.S. Coast Guard on bridge and road closures. As the governor mentioned, when sustained winds reach over 40 miles per hour, that's when the decision begins to be made for bridges to be closed to traffic. Um, also, at the governor's direction, we've suspended tolls in the Tampa Bay region to help facilitate people getting to safety before the storm impacts the coast of Florida. Uh, we've been coordinating very closely with our transportation partners, our seaports, airports, other passenger services. Uh, our seaports uh, are ready for this storm. They are fully topped off with fuel supplies and ready to respond quickly after the storm passes through. With regards to passenger service at airports, railroads, and transit agencies, please um, look for your local media notices in terms of that service. We have begun to see services suspended at airports and also the SunRail service in Central Florida. We have 13 traffic management centers around the state that operate 24-7 where teams are monitoring road conditions and traffic levels along critical corridors to ensure the safe travel for drivers. Uh, at these traffic management centers, our crews input traffic information into Florida's 511 system in real time. This is going to be the place where you can get the most timely and accurate information on traffic as this storm impacts the state of Florida. Please visit florida511.com or download the app on Apple or Android devices. This is where you'll be able to get that uh, real time information on traffic. Last but not least, remember safety is definitely the top priority. As you get your family and yourself to safety, please remember we want to see you get where you're going safely. Please keep that in mind, and thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Okay, so we have, um, uh, you know, short amount of time here. I just urge everybody to take, take the appropriate precautions. You still have time uh, to do what you need to do, uh, but we are going to be faced with a, a major hurricane hitting the state of Florida. Uh, within um, you know the next uh, 24 to, uh, uh, to 36 hours, so so be ready for that, and uh, just know if you're in the path of this storm or even outside the cone, you know chance there's a good chance you're going to lose power. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people working to restore that, but but just be prepared for that to happen, and and make sure you're doing what you need to do for yourself and your family. Okay, any questions? Yeah, contingency plans so, for uh, Tallahassee. Closings that Secretary Purdue mentioned. Any idea as to when in the Tampa Bay area that 40 mile per hour winds might reach and those two might coincide? I don't know if you've spoken to them in your briefings. What do you think? Uh, 40. I mean, it'll be yeah, we're, tonight probably, right? Yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. I would I would say sometime tonight. I think you're late tonight, early tomorrow morning, you should probably see winds of that. Now, you know, this track, it's, it's, they've moved it a little further west, and so, I mean, obviously there's still going to be impacts in Tampa Bay, but every notch west, it's a little less impact to, to, to Tampa. So um, some of the models had it going even further west into Tallahassee. Uh, NHC uh, has not been willing to, to go that far, and some of these models have been very bad, to be honest with you, if you look at pre past storms. Uh, but there is some people that, that think it's going to go even further west than that. And so that's why we say certainly Tallahassee, those areas, you know, you're not, you're not out of the woods. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any contingency plans for state government to continue operating if Tallahassee is devastated? So we're going to do um, on – so basically what the state government has traditionally done is when Leon County – uh, does a, a closure, then the state doesn't, they closes their office buildings. Now, people will still be, you know, working from home or what they need and the essential personnel that are here. So, so everything will, will continue. Uh, but in terms of routine state government work, uh, they will be home on Wednesday. Do they have the facilities 
Um, ACA yesterday put out a message urging healthcare facilities to report their status. Have some facilities not been cooperating? What's the latest on that? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> Secretary Weta with the Agency for Healthcare Administration and uh, Deputy Secretary uh, Ken Shepke with Department of Health have been working with hospitals alongside. We have thousands of facilities that are required to report. Sometimes those facilities do have some delays in reporting. Um, this is one of those things that uh, just like with any other type of bureaucratic system, we're, we're encouraging them to update today. Don't procrastinate. You know, I think their normal updates are maybe once a week. So again, it's just don't wait to the end of the week when your normal reporting time is. We need you to be in a daily status reporting update now. So uh, that's what the focus was yesterday of getting real-time stats and keeping that um, evergreen. So, Governor or, or Director, um, uh, this storm's going to hit some of the poorest parts of the state, uh, you know, Hamilton County, Levy, or Levy County and whatnot. I don't know if, like Michael, if you have talked with FEMA about getting expedited funding so that the reimbursement uh, angle isn't there for those counties that are only bringing in three three million in ad revenue. Yeah, uh, so, you know, the, the governor under his leadership with the hurricane, um, actually, we'll go all the way back to Michael or Eric, we, uh, he... He'd been on the job one day when he uh, authorized expedited funding, which the previous administration did not do. Uh, so with the, with two days left, we did a lot of expedited projects uh, to FEMA for Hurricane Michael. We did expedited projects for Hurricane um, Ian, uh, and we are now in the process. I got people on the floor right now doing expedited projects for FEMA. Uh, Robert is uh, the acting administrator for uh, FEMA Region 4. He is aware of that. His team is here. Uh, they know that we're going to be asking for several expedited projects from the state level. We're going to encourage counties to do the same. I'm sure the governor will probably have some announcements about, you know, things that he may be doing to help fiscally constrain counties in future press conferences. And, and a quick follow-up. We figured out the ratio or how much FEMA will pay. I think with, I think we had, like, first 100 days for Michael. I think we had 100%. Yeah, so we're, we're in the process of writing up that documentation right now. Um, right now we know that we're at 75-25. They've already covered uh, Category B and DFA, direct federal assistance. Those will be – at a minimum 7525, but we will be writing uh, letters for the governor's signature that will ask for 100% um, coverage for X number of amount of days. Uh, we're trying to see exactly what the type of damage is going to be. You know, does it come? It, it doesn't make sense for us to come out today and say we want 100 days because we don't know how much damage we have. We don't want to be overzealous, but at the same time, we want to make sure that we take care of Florida. And I, I think that w w with this storm, uh, given the uh, geography, there's going to be a lot of debris, a lot of a lot of trees, a lot of that. Now, that's a challenge, but it's also compared to say an Ian, where you had it mixed with a lot of commercial and residential. You know, this is likely just going to be you know a lot of trees and roads and stuff, and so it's going to be a big effort. But I think it'll be something where you know you get those people in to pick up the debris, uh, and they're going to be able to do it. Uh, I think it'll be easier to get rid of the debris, just just given how the things are laid out. You know, there were some serious challenges with, with Ian, just given how uh, the debris would be scattered all over the place. I think we know that there's going to be uh, a lot of debris. I think we know there's going to be a lot of trees and limbs and, and all that that's going to be there, and mm -hmm. that's going to be a, a really important part of the of the post storm recovery. I have a question for you. you know, as this is intensified into a hurricane uh, and continues to intensify. How long are you planning on staying in Florida and off of the campaign trail? Well, this is no different. I mean, you remember, Ian, we were in the midst of, of, a, of a governor campaign. I had all kinds of stuff scheduled, not just in Florida, around the country. You know, we were doing different things. And, you know, you, you, you do what you need to do. I mean, and so that's what we're doing. So it's going to be no different than what we did uh, during Hurricane Ian. I'm hoping that this storm is not as, as catastrophic as Hurricane Ian was. But we're gonna we're gonna do uh, you know do do what we need to do because it's just it's just something that's important. But it's no different than what we've done in past um, uh, past iterations of all this stuff. All right, we're gonna be going uh, uh, for evacuations. A number of people have that have been ordered evacuated. And are you hearing anything about fuel or traffic issues? Want to take that? Yes, sir. So. We, we, I will get you another number for any future press conferences that we have, but um, we probably, in this particular disaster, uh, in level A and level Bs, we're looking at probably a tenth of what, uh, maybe a, a, a fifth of what we had for Hurricane Ian. I mean, we're not dealing with nearly the population that we, we had in that other situation. So, But we'll get you a, a, a number, my 
geo-information specialists can pull those numbers of households for you. As far as fuel goes, we have more than enough fuel. Um, you know, I, I'll let uh, Secretary Purdue have, talk about how much fuel is at the ports. But as far as what we've ordered, we've ordered over 400,000 gallons of gas. Um, we, we have more than enough fuel to backfill any issues that we have going on right now. But uh, if you don't mind, Governor, I'll let yep, Secretary sure. Purdue talk about the ports. Yeah, thank you. In terms of evacuations, as I mentioned, we have our traffic management centers. We're monitoring traffic in real time. Uh, we're prepared. We have emergency contra in contracts in place for motorist aid and disabled vehicles. And, you know, we'll, we'll watch as those evacuations occur. And, you know, if it gets to the point where it's needed, we have what's known as emergency shoulder use, which we've successfully implemented in past storms to help facilitate those evacuations. In terms of fuel, all of our seaports are fully topped off and stocked with fuel and ready to respond as soon as the storm passes through. All right, well, we will be back uh, later today with, uh, with another update. I'm going to uh, be on the road uh, visiting some of the areas that are likely to be affected.